How you doing, Tim? Yeah, yeah, good. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So you are with Halo PSA. Yeah. So um, I'm the. I, I get <laughs> introduce myself differently sometimes depending who I'm talking to because we don't really have specific roles at Halo. Okay. Um, or we have roles. We don't have titles. I guess um, we're one of those companies. Um, so. I am head of Halo PSA, so the equivalent of something like CEO, I guess. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm not an owner. Um, I joined when we were about four or five employees, I think, and we're now about 60, 65 employees. Um, and yes, yeah, so and my, my role is kind of to, to head up Halo PSA in terms of the, the business development, the, um, the product itself, um, and every, everything else really. Um, so I get involved in all kinds of parts of the business other than the accounts part, which I try and stay away from. Um, right. that's very, very boring, but yeah, that's, a, a, I guess, a quick intro to, for me, for those of you who, who don't know who I am. No, that's, that's great. So I just want to kind of dive right in. Okay. So we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna throw it all on the wall, see what sticks. So recently it was announced that some other big PSA and, you know, they do all kinds of other stuff. Uh, but in terms of this conversation, some other big PSA is going to get acquired. Um, and I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, I'm, well, I'm going to switch to Halo PSA. Like that's, that's what's coming out of everyone's mouths. And I don't know if it's like one guy said it and it sounded like a really great idea. And then everyone else just started saying it. Or, or if, or if your product is really that great that everyone's like, I think I'm going to use it. So no offense. I just, (laughs) (laughs) but, but it's like Halo came out of nowhere, right? I mean, let's face it. You are, uh, you're, you're Brit, correct? You know, you're, you're from across the pond. So I suspect your software, you know, it's going to have like, oh, you, Instead of just O, like in, in some of these things, you know, like labor, L A B O U R. What? No, this isn't. Uh, and and you know, you, you might use different words for some things. And yeah, it's probably going to be a very like UK English type of tool, which you know Americans for some reason usually frown upon. And now suddenly everyone wants to jump to your software. So, uh, I yeah, guess all that to say. Why aren't you letting them? <laughs> yeah, so the ten years of minimum. It's really. It's, I mean, it's annoying for me as. I mean, in my role, my role is, is basically, I guess, to make up a successful company, which, in simple terms, equates to making loads of money. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, letting loads of people on board, I should absolutely be doing that. I think, um, and letting anyone join and having no minimums. But we've always been really about the long term. Um, we're not like equity owned or anything like that we've got two private owners um and we've always taken a long-term view on our strategy um and i think that's that's really helpful with stuff like this it's also helpful for other reasons for development and stuff we don't really care about next year or two years time we're thinking about five years time and ten years time um and i think we got to the point with our growth um which is probably like you say, like people thinking it's going to be a great idea, jump on board. Um, we we had a lot of growth last year, a lot more than expected. Um, previous to last year, we were probably around 20, 30% growth each year, which was, we were happy, we were kind of happy with that. Um, we were open to growing faster, of course, but that was what we'd done for about four or five years. And it was just nice and steady and uh, easy to maintain, easy to grow, easy to employ new staff. But then last year, it was probably something more like 60, 70% uh, growth, maybe even higher than that. I'm not sure on the exact figure, um, but that that has become too much. And I don't think we can keep that up um, forever. Um, and the problem is the growth isn't just, it's not just everyone handing over their, their monthly subscription. It's us having to support the product properly, um, implement the product po- properly for people who have never seen it before. Um, and it's not as simple as just let's go and employ a load of people and get them to implement it. You have to train those people up to be good at implementing it. 
Otherwise, it just goes badly for our customers. Um, so the reason we had the ten, <laughs> the ten user limit, and I know some people, some people will always hate the way we've done it, and I can, I can see their point of view because it is you're just putting a barrier up to a, a, an arbitrary amount. Um, but at the end of the day, we made a data driven decision based on the amount of time that it takes to implement a less than 10 person company compared to the amount of time it takes to implement a larger than 10 person company. Um, and you may or may not be surprised, but it's very similar. Um, implementing a, a three person or even a one person MSP, if they want a hand, takes just as much time as a 20 or 30 person MSP, pretty much because they're still implementing the same system. They still have a service desk that needs to be set up, um, you know, tested. Um, they've got to set their opportunities or CRM area up. They've got to set their first service portal up. All of their billing requirements are the same. Um, and the requirement doesn't, it just kind of scales in that you set up to the billing for people, all their managed services and all their labor requirements and projects and sales orders and stuff like that. And it takes the same, the same amount of time because they're all doing the same thing just on a larger scale. Um, so the decision was made based on the fact that I think it was about 30% of our customers, so individual customers. If you look at our customer count, 30% of them accounted for about 70% of our implementation time. And that was because the, the small ones take as long as the larger ones to implement. Um, and we could have done it other ways. I guess we could have done it where we just pick and there's a lit, there's just a, a waiting list. Um, or we could have done it where we stopped the larger ones joining. Um, it was just my decision to draw a line at 10 and it was kind of arbitrary and, uh, let's see how it goes kind of thing. Um, okay. And okay. So it's an arbitrary number is, is there. Is there a case to be made by any of the smaller ones where maybe they can twist your arm? Um, <laughs> we really don't want to get in that position because I, the the problem is, is we don't have the resource to implement that many people. We're at a point now where our wait times have gone up beyond what we think is acceptable. And also our support, it's the same with support where the support the time taken to support a small company is almost the same as it takes to support a bigger one. But with support, you can almost make an argument that it's easier to support larger companies because when you mm -hmm. get into large MSPs, they'll have someone who's the dedicated Halo guy and everyone goes to them for issues and he knows the system really well. That's kind of his role. So there is also, it, <laughs> it's annoying, but it is easier to support larger organizations. Um, so okay. it's kind of, it's, it's a bit stacked against the, the little guy. Um, in terms of us as the vendor, um, and it's, we do want to be able to support them. It's it's just going to be us getting our, our ducks in a row or whatever the phrase is, so that we have the capacity um, to be able to do that. And the twisting arm, like there may be cases where we've let people just about through if they were close to the cutoff date. Um, but the problem is, is they'll have they will probably have a bad time because they'll come on board without as much implementation or any implementation assistance and they won't set the system up right or it won't be set up right and they won't know how it works and they'll just think it's a bad system they'll just be like oh it was rubbish i tried it and i couldn't get it working but in reality it's it's rubbish if you don't set it up right which is probably the same as you could say for any psa system you hear the same thing about people with connectwise manage or autotask if you don't implement it right it's going to be a bad tool um, that's that's true i th i think it's safe to say Everybody hates one of the PSA tools for one reason or another. You know, it's too many steps or it's not pretty or, or whatever. And a lot of the times it's, it's really surface level nonsense that people will be like, I don't like this tool. Uh, and I've, I've said it, I've probably said it a thousand times on this podcast now, but you know, Back when I started my MSP, I was that guy who he was just looking for magic tools, right? You know, I'd I'd sign up for something and like, oh, wait, I have to like 
configure all this crap? Like, why isn't this just set up? Like, just tell me the way I should run my MSP. Like, that's that's what I was. I was just looking for the thing. Like, here, we've set it up. This is how it operates. Here's how you operate. Just go. And that was that was stupid. Okay. <laughs> Nobody, just so you guys are aware, it's never going to happen, probably. Um, so... So once I once I learned, uh, there was an MSP at a at an event I went to. He said, "Man, you got to stop doing that." Like every and and, and it, it really fits with everything. Every PSA sucks. You just have to find the one that sucks the least for you. And and when you spin it around like that, like obviously that that makes. <laughs> wow, I just said something really bad about Tim's product. But, but when you spin it around like that, like, man, all of these things suck. And it's not because they're actually bad products. It's like, it, it just sucks to have to go through and spend dozens or hundreds of hours, like setting all this stuff up. Like It sucks. Okay. Bottom line. But you just got to find the one that sucks the least for you. Like uh, video. I'm going to go completely off topic. I have an argument with a with a great friend of mine all the time because he insists on using Final Cut Pro, and I say we should use DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I used Final Cut Pro with him for four years, and he and I were editing things, and it was always like, I just, I still, to this day, cannot figure out all the things on Final Cut Pro. <laughs> with DaVinci, I opened it up and I, I started using it in October when our, ch our church got a new building, we got a new video switcher, it automatically creates a, a DaVinci file after it's done recording a thing. It's the uh, the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. So if you guys ever need a video switcher for events, for production stuff, I strongly recommend that one. <laughs> uh and so I open up this this file. I'm like, all right, well, I'll try out DaVinci. It's free, first of all. And I open up the file, and, like, everything was just really intuitive. It all made sense to me. My buddy, it, he, he, like, he, he doesn't get it. It doesn't click for him, right? So, so sometimes some software just feels better to some people mm -hmm. and, and other software feels better to other people and it's it's okay that there's people that feel very strongly one way or the other about their psas and it's also i think we can say really unfortunate that everybody has suddenly changed their minds about one of them due to an acquisition the thing hasn't even taken place yet changes haven't been made and everybody's already made up their mind and it's only because of the track record that the acquiring company has with what they've done to their products in the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's, I mean, that one's a funny one. Um, I would, if I was an Autotask user, I wouldn't necessarily be too concerned at the moment. I'd be thinking, the say is not going to move everyone onto BMS. Um, no. Because it's not the better product. They'll move everyone from BMS to Autotask. And then hopefully leave most of it alone. And yeah, they might not have a track record of necessarily doing that, but surely they will learn. They must have, they must know a bit about what they're doing. Um, I, well, I hope they do. And I, I think that there's a good chance that they'll just leave the auto task guys, leave data guys alone to do their job. Um, and I, I've read something really interesting. Uh, somebody on, I don't know, one of the Slack or discord things, um, they said, hey, who knows? Maybe maybe this is Kaseya. Like, they're acquiring a company that has a, let's be honest, a great reputation. And they're going to, like, move their stuff into Datto and keep the Datto brand and make the Kaseya brand fade out. Because maybe maybe they're sick of the you know, the negative reputation they have, maybe they want to capitalize on the positive reputation for Datto. So they'll, maybe they'll keep everything the same with Datto because they're doing it right or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I really liked that, you know, somebody is at least trying to look at this positively or as positively as he can. Um, 
And and the other thing to say is, you know, I I will speculate that I believe Kaseya has a large stake in Pulseway. Yeah, I th- I think I don't know that it's ever been confirmed, but I I am speculating. I just want to confirm that I'm speculating <laughs> that <laughs> Kaseya has a a large stake in Pulseway. And I I think it's been that way for, gosh, almost a decade. And if that's the case, I mean, I'm not saying Pulseway is some some big mega R and M tool, but I mean they have they have done a really good job of of keeping their reputation completely separate from Kaseya. Mm-hmm. And and so I, I I guess all I'm trying to say is it can be done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's all. It's all too bad. Um, I definitely think it's. It should be a wait and see, not a let's get out of it straight away. Yes, <laughs> yes. But for the people that do want to get out of it straight away, as you said, yeah. If if they've got fewer than ten users, Halo PSA really isn't going to be the right option unless they're willing to pay for ten licenses. I and mean, that's that's really all it is. You don't care if they've got two people, but they have to pay for ten. No, no, no. Nah, we've turned people down who wanted to pay for ten. Really? Because that's a. I don't. I hate that. That's a. That's more of a paywall, and that's not fair on those that can't pay. I feel like that's. It's a. Sm- it's a small difference, but I feel like that is a difference. No, uh, they're at like eight. And they're like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hire two more guys in the next six months. I would but, say no. I'd say if, I mean, they could lie and just say we're ten straight away. Okay. <laughs> but if we if if they said they were eight and we plan to do this or do that, then it would still be no. Um, okay. Because it's it's about. I mean, it's really about capacity. If 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 everyone started doing that, we'd have to raise the number to 12, which would be really annoying. <laughs> like it, we, we're doing this to try and get less customers in the short term, basically. And if everyone's just going to go ahead and do something to get around it, it's going to make it worse for everyone. It's going to give everyone a worse onboarding experience, support experience. Um, our documentation's not going to get sorted out. Um, as you'll see that that will be talked about quite a lot, I guess. I think it's mentioned on Reddit a few times and other places, um, where our documentation isn't up to scratch and to sort that out, we're, we're pulling some of our implementation team, um, away from implementations and moving them to a documentation team, um, That's and, make, and expanding it basically and having a proper, proper effort on documentation. Cause in the past, we've always taken a view that we've got loads of implementation resource why would you need that good of documentation? We'll just show you and we'll have sessions with you and run you through it and we can talk about it. But that doesn't scale. Um, it doesn't scale and some people don't want to get on the phone and chat to someone. They want to go and do it themselves, which I get. I don't like, I don't know, if we sign up to look at a new tool internally, I hate it when someone reaches out and wants to have a chat and a catch up and I just want a guide and I'll go and do it myself. <laughs> yeah. I'll work it out. If I get into problems, yeah, I'll reach out. But um, I completely get that point of view. Um can I can I make a recommendation? Um and and I don't I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. I just wanna I just wanna give you a recommendation for documentation that I really love. Check out memberful. So it's member F U L dot com okay. yep. slash help. Or if you just went to the root site, you go to resources documentation. And I, I don't even know how you would implement something like this for a PSA, because obviously there's going to be more than, what, 10, 15 items on the side, right? But I just really love, I'm, I'm using this for the, for the peer group side of things. Right. Um, I just really love the way that they've documented everything. Like if you go to the, the WordPress plugin and WordPress short codes, like they made it, you know, they just made it like really, crystal clear here's how you use the thing you know like yeah. every everywhere you go like they just have really great documentation it's 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 short enough that you don't feel like you're reading a manual yeah but it's 
but it's got everything you need and there's lots of pictures and, and whatever else like yeah it, it does look it does look a little bit like what we're implementing at the moment actually good um so i'm just having so, to look at it now and it is nice <laughs> yeah and and i asked them because they they use intercom for their for their chat and support but this is all built into their website so this isn't intercom this is they literally built this as part of their website oh uh, okay. right okay so so i was you know i just i remember complimenting them one day on on how much i enjoyed the and again somebody else may hate this but i found this to be a really intuitive resource for me to be able to learn how to set this thing up and i did i mean i implemented this this product by myself i got it all done and I don't know a weekish, and it was it was it was really a delight to work with. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 Well, there's a few different ways we're doing the documentation or focusing on it. One of them is a is an admin guide, I guess, where it goes through all the config, every single option, and basically has a bit of a better explanation of mm. exactly what it does. Because that's one thing that we're lacking at the moment. There's a setting; it kind of explains. And you see it and you're like, does that do what I want? I'm not sure. Do I try it? Um, so that's one area we know we need. To um, and the other area is like worked, worked examples. Mm -hmm. um, because although every MSP does want to do things slightly differently, although none of them will believe you when you say that, um, <laughs> um, they, they try it. They are still trying to do most of the things the same, or at least the core of what they're doing is the same. Um, so worked examples is something that we're, we're focusing on in the academy as well. So just, I don't know, how do I set up an onboarding flow with, um, ticket templates and a, a workflow, um, and just having a really nice, quite simple example of how to do that. And then they could go and read about workflows and stuff like that separately. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely something that we're aware of and trying to, trying to sort out. That's one of the main reasons the 10 user limit was brought in is so we have enough resource to actually move everyone into documentation um because documentation's hard you need really experienced people doing it otherwise it's rubbish you just um because we it used to be uh, uh, it's probably going back five or six years ago now but we once it would be a job we'd give to people that were newish um but it's just too hard because they don't know the practical use case for anything that they're writing they could tell you maybe what it does but you need to know more than that. You need to know why it does that and what you're supposed to do with this setting. Um, so it it does take experienced people, which is why they're being taken from the implementation team, which then means that we can't implement anywhere near as many um, customers this year. Hmm. Now, with with that, I, I find that so fascinating that you're using the implementation team people to do that. If it, I guess... You, you do want people that actually understand the the product, sure. Um, I might I might look to create a team specifically for documentation because you know Dev is going to hopefully continuously add new features and functions and and everything. So there should always be people creating and updating documentation you know you're you're going to constantly find that oh yeah these people will be these people have been taken from the implementation team and they're not on that anymore they're going to be the documentation team okay it, so it, it's just a it, it's don't, yeah it's not like a part-time role it is okay you guys yeah it's you guys aren't doing implementations anymore you're doing documentation but um i mean the reason we took them from implementation teams is because they should know what the what our customers want to know because they've been this sh this should basically be if you're if you don't want to pay for implementation or you don't want an implementation or there's a new bit of the software you want to implement after six months a year go to the documentation and that would do a good job of it for you so the guys that would know best should be the implementation team because they're basically trying to write documentation that will partially replace their role um so i mean it's in their best interest to write good documentation that will be used yeah because when yeah. they're doing an implementation, if it's something that's quite straightforward, rather than say, yeah, let's have a two hour call and run through this, they can say, oh, we've got a really good document about this in the um, academy or wherever. Um, go and use that. And if you need to ask for further questions, then we can have a session. So it's in their interest to write good documentation, really. So are you also going to have video? 
We're not initially. I know some people love video. I actually don't like video. <laughs> I'm, I'm, still... I'm hit or miss. Like yeah. so, sometimes I'm like, okay, this is complex enough. I need to see it and I need to have it explained to me. Whereas other times I just shut up. Just let me read. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, I I guess I've always thought it's a bit, it's generally a bit of a younger generation thing where 20 year olds, 21 year olds, they are going to probably want videos because um, everything's, everything they do is videos these days. And that's what they yeah. kind of grow. That's what they're growing up with. Um, I don't, I still don't like videos. I'd still prefer a guide or some bullet points or something or another, just a numbered page telling me what the steps are. And, um, but we aren't doing them yet. And the reason we're not is partly because we need to get something in place and we prefer to do the written stuff first because the written stuff and the pictures works for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, even if you don't like it, it'll work for everyone. Um, and the video stuff, you need to then update it. And because of our pretty rapid development, we'd have to go back and be editing videos all the time. Whereas if you want to make a change to a guide, because there's an extra step been put in or an extra option, you just go and edit the HTML or however your guide is created. You just go and chuck it in. Um, so that is going to be difficult. It's, if you add a new setting in, you're, you're either going to have to... I don't really do much video editing, but I'd imagine that you'd have to go back and re-edit the video and put your extra kind of bit from the slide in, and then you'd have to make sure it looks the same or it's going to be a strange experience. So then you do you have to re re-record the whole video end to end. Um, well, so so here, hear me out. I'm so what I'm looking at is uh, right now how how does Halo PSA scale? And I don't mean for the MSP. I mean for Halo PSA, for you guys internally. What What is it going to take for you guys to be able to bring on the five-user and the three-user MSPs? Because eventually I think you're going to want that. You know, you're, you're going to run out of 10-user MSPs or, and more, and, and you're going to want to start lowering that number because eventually you'll have capacity because your documentation is going to be better and implementation is going to be buttoned up and you know every everything's just going to be better right so what does it take for halo psa to start scaling yeah well i mean that's that's the main thing we, that we need is, i feel is the documentation is so lacking at the moment that mm. it's it it needs um you need a uh like the same number of what's the word for it <laughs> As your customer base increases, you just need to multiply your um, implementation team. And that doesn't really scale that well because then you need to be hiring a huge number of people. If we suddenly had the same if we suddenly had the same number of customers as as Autotask or ConnectWise, um, we'd probably need an implementation team of uh, I don't know, over a thousand, um, which I don't think those guys have. I'd be very but surprised. The, but the way that you plan on implementing is is just more hands on is that it well the way yeah the way we've always done it in the past is completely hands on and yeah. almost every time that say you say you're trying to implement the system in a couple of months or a month almost every session that the the cus our customer the msp will have that relates to halo will be with someone from halo who's running them through it or discussing it um whereas i think the approach that a lot of other systems take definitely other software in other industries um, is your implementation person might have a catch up once a week or I don't know, once mm -hmm. in two weeks, but they could ask you questions, but most of it is, yeah, here's a bit of an explanation. Here's the document, go and go and try and do it because the documentation is good enough that you don't need to ask someone loads of questions and you don't need it explained to you. Um, and I think that's how most people want to do it as well. I, I think I'd be frustrated if I had to get on a call with my implementation person every time I want to change something and it. It's not like that. Some people get it and can change things and get the system. But for those that don't, they they do. You need a lot of help with the system, which we've always been happy to provide. But it doesn't scale, just because the number of um, the number of consultants and implementation team would have to directly match the number of customers. Um, and that in itself, again, isn't even a. It's not necessarily a problem. Like we don't see that as a problem. The training up your implementation team takes time. Like. You can't get someone in, you can't get someone new in, no matter what their experience is, and have them ready to implement Halo 
in six months or, or a year, it takes a long time to get someone ready to actually implement the system because they need to understand MSPs, they need to understand the industry to some degree, and then they need to learn Halo PSA. Um, mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a lot to learn and be ready to go and implement a system on your own. Um, do you have like a path? Like, do they start off maybe, uh, they go through training and then they, then they become like a customer service rep and then they can do implement, like how yeah, does that work? We have like a buddy system, I guess, where everyone on the implementation team who's new will be paired with someone on the implementation team who's experienced and they will just, they will sit with them. That's their job is to sit next to them and, and work with them take small projects from them or take sessions that relate to a project. So you might have an implementation and you've got one session next week that you think this, this new person could do. So you explain the process to them and they can go and do it themselves. Um, and it just kind of goes from there. That's the best way to do it. I think, um, if they go on site to the customer to implement, you bring your buddy with you. They basically do everything you do, um, until they're ready to, to go and do their own implementations. But it, that, that does mean it takes time. Um, you guys do on-site implementation? Yeah, we prefer to do on-site implementation massively because it's so much more efficient because you get our attention and we get your attention for eight hours or whatever it is. Whereas if you try and do it bit by bit, a couple hours on a Monday, we'll do an hour call on a Thursday, you lose focus so much. You forget what's happened in between those times. Um, you... You might not follow up on stuff that you said you're going to follow up on, but if you get one of our guys on site for three days, the aim is to have service desk ready to go on day three or something like that. So you just give, generally it works really well because we get your full attention from anyone we need in your organization um, to just get the job done. So we much prefer to come on site. We have the same, the pricing is the same. For the If you buy like an implementation package or something, we just, we have the same price. The goal of our implementation isn't really, it's not focused on making money. The the goal is to get the customer live and happy with the system. Um, So we prefer to come on site. And and so let's talk about that. So I see, let's, let's just talk about, I'm going to talk about a 10 person MSP. All right. So it's $90 per user per month because most of them probably pay monthly still. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going to assume they pay monthly. (laughs) nine hundred dollars a month okay so how does the implementation work is that that's a paid thing um yeah it is if you want a long implementation um sometimes we would normally offer a little bit for free we'd never want anyone to go without any implementation because Mm -hmm. you'll just end up getting frustrated with the system possibly or or not being able to do something um and then calling into support and asking support how to do it And support will tell you how to do it, not why or the best way to do it necessarily, because they won't understand your use case and your, your background. Um, so it ends up being a worse experience for everyone, um, and taking just as much time from our, our resource. So we prefer to do an implementation if we can. Um, and yeah, the cost. So it's about, I think it's about 750 pounds a day. I don't know what that is in dollars. Um, We'll, we'll call it a thousand bucks. Yeah. And that's probably that, not that high, but that's like eight hours, I think. Yeah, it's eight hours. So either on site or, um, or remote, if you prefer to do it remote. And the length, Pat, the length of it varies massively. We have some people who are 10, 10 employee MSPs who don't need implementation and have the system set up and it's done, it's working. And then we have some who will buy something like a 40 hour or maybe even an 80 hour package sometimes, um, which sounds like a lot to some people. That's only a week or two though. Yeah. That if they would normally then use those hours, they'd have some remote stuff first where they discuss approach and, um, what you want to achieve and set some goals and set some timelines. And then you might come on site for two or three days to do one bit that goes live. We go on site a few weeks later to do the next part of the system. Um, and then that goes live It's we really do it. However, suits you best. Um, I mean, we have our own opinions on how it should be done. Um, but for the larger implementations, it'll be split between remote and on site. So, so let's talk about the on site because, um, for the people that are going to jump ship over to halo, 
that do have the appropriate size. Again, we're going to continue talking about this uh, 10, per, 10 person MSP I've made up. Uh, so, so we're talking, uh, if that was a thousand bucks for eight hours, uh, so now it's, now it's 5,000 bucks for 40 or 10,000 bucks for 80. And that's, that's not, that's not scary to me when it's, when it's that size MSP, you know, they're, they're usually doing maybe two mil a year at that point. They should have, uh, you know, reasonable profit margin and profitability and all that stuff. So, ten grand to implement a product. So, so let's say there's a there's a guy in California with ten people at his MSP, and and he pays the ten thousand for the eighty hours. You guys are going to fly out to California. And, uh, yeah, on site from Washington State. Yeah. Oh, so you've you've <laughs> you've got a. Okay. I've got a US I've got a US office and an Australian office in Melbourne. So how many guys are in the US office? I think it's about ten at the moment. And are they actually employees or are they just like uh consultants or how how's that work? No, they're employees. There's normally at the moment there's about seven I think it's seven US staff, maybe eight, and then two or three UK staff, experienced UK staff that go over there. And we rotate UK staff who are experienced going out to the US um, to get to get them experience, to train them up, and to pass on, I guess, a bit of our kind of company culture as well. Just because it's I, difficult to keep that. Um, and I'm sure that could be fun for some of the UK guys as well. Like, oh yeah, they love it. Yeah, they're riding up. How long do they stay? <laughs> like, is it like a three six month kind of thing? It's at the moment. It's three months, um, but we probably will make it longer and look at extending those to six months or a year for those that want to stay out there for longer. And, and now just because I'm, I'm curious because I love learning about weird stuff. Do, how, how does that work? Does that need a work visa from the UK to the U S? Yeah. I think you need a business visa. Okay. Uh, is that easy for for your people to, to get, to acquire? To- um, I've never got involved with it. <laughs> okay, I've never so, got too involved. There is a US the nice thing. It, there is a US it, entity. Yeah. Um. So there is a US business called Halo Service Solutions LLC or something like that. Or I'm not sure. I can't remember what the name of it is. Um. But that exists now to to help us, I guess, um, assist us in the US market. It makes it easier to do things like gain visas. Um. And I think all the U.S. employees are now employed by that organization, not the U.K. one, um, that kind of thing. But, yeah, that is that is the only kind of thing I really don't get involved too involved with um, is the really high-level stuff that, I don't know, creating businesses and stuff. I've never really never really got too much involved in that. No, that's all good. Uh, like I said, I just, I just love learning weird stuff, uh, that, <laughs> you know. Um, well, that's that's really cool, man. So, I, I gotta say, I'm I'm impressed with the why. Okay, you, the the reason why you have the ten user limit. It doesn't sound like you're not saying, oh well, you know, the small MSPs they just suck, and they're never happy, so they'll sign up for two or three months and then just leave because they're looking for a magic PSA like like 10 years ago, Steve was, you're, you're not saying that at all. You're just saying we, we don't have a good enough experience and our staff is not ready to accept this mass exodus of people we're anticipating from, from this merger. So we're putting an arbitrary limit in order to make sure that we can continue to be a profitable company and provide all of our existing and future customers with the same excellent level of service that we've been able to provide. And by, by accepting all of these, these new businesses, it would, it would, you know, hinder all of that. And, and we just, we, we won't do it. Is that, is that? Yeah, that is, yeah, that does sum it up. I mean, if we let everyone on board, I guarantee that a lot of them would have a bad time and leave after six months. 
they and I don't know what the I don't know what the big fuss was about. They're awful. Their support's terrible. Their implementation is terrible. Their documentation is yeah. terrible. And I'd say, yeah, well, <laughs> I warned you. And then it's, uh, they've, wait, they've wasted six months. We've wasted time. No one's no one's winning there. It's just a terrible experience for everyone. Um, and I do appreciate and sympathize with those that don't like the way we've gone about it because it is there had to be a way of doing it and i can see why some people wouldn't like the way that we've chosen um, mm-hmm. but i i think most people would make the same decision if that if it was their business i think they would they might not because some people are a different um and have they do it differently and they've got their own reasons why they would have done it differently but I think there's there's MSPs we've spoken to that have done the same thing where they no longer bring on um, mum and pop IT, uh, the mum and pop companies and they won't just support that little cafe around the corner because there's only two guys and, and nothing to do. Um, and they won't right. make much money from it. And And the thing that MSPs always say is, I don't want one of these tiny little businesses because it's it's the ones that make me the least money that take the most time yeah and i'm not i'm not saying it's the same because i'm saying that we do want you like we do we, when we're ready we want you but i think it's a i guess a useful comparison just so because it's a similar situation it's not it's not the same because well, we, we will let you on board and there is we do want to let you on board and, and if everything goes well i think it's september or november i can't remember what we set the date to but this year we should let people on board again um and it might be that we haven't done well enough and we bring it down from 10 to 8 or 10 to 5 the plan at the moment is to get rid of the limit again Um, okay so yeah it's not and it's yeah so it's not the same as the msp not bringing on the small customers but i think it's a similar similar argument yeah Mm -hmm. well like like i said i'm i'm really impressed with the way that that you guys have gone about this um, I know some MSPs are going to gripe, but the way that your business is currently operating, you, you just can't, you can't scale that way. And, no. and, you know, I, I respect that. So kudos. Thank you for coming on and having this conversation. Uh, is there anything, you know, do you have any final words of wisdom for any MSPs that are panicking right now <laughs> is that about the auto task stuff <laughs> yeah probably probably i mean i'd i'd say don't panic just wait and see i mean the merger there might be something that comes up and the merger might not even go ahead um but i find it very unlikely that you're going to be pushed onto bms and i think it's unlikely that they're going to change too much at least in the short term because they're going to want to keep it the same they're going to they've got a profitable company or i, I assume is a profitable company um in in dato and they probably have bought it for the reputation so i'd say don't panic um and if you did want to move to halo and you are less than 10 and you're one of those that um is worried about auto tasks um acquisition then i think don't rush i think it's going to be we're still going to be here in six months or eight Mm -hmm. months and it does take time to plan anyway um and moving psa is a massive task um sometimes people do it really quickly but generally it's really big uh, you've got all your other tools and stuff plugged into it and there's loads of integrations and it is a massive task um, a lot of the time to move a PSA. So I definitely say don't rush. I don't want people to rush. We don't we don't like it when people rush into it and then they realize that they hadn't considered X, Y, Z. Um, it, it just, it's not a good experience for anyone. So just, I'd say do it carefully. Don't jump, jump around from one to the other thinking that it's going to be a, a, an easy transition because it, it's not. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. Oh. I, I wish you guys the, the best of uh, luck and success in the next, gosh, it's only going to be six months or so before hopefully that, that yeah. number reduces. So yeah. And I, and I can't wait to have you on again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, let's, let's do another one of these once that limit changes yeah, it and let's show off the product for everybody. Yep. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, Steve. Absolutely.